Today's video is another what I eat in a day. It's been a while since I've done one of these, so I wanna share what I've been eating in New York City since I've kind of just made the transition from LA to New York and share the foods I've been eating that are a little bit warmer and more filling and good for the winter months. Okay, so let's start off with breakfast. Uh, I'm gonna kind of do each meal here and then clear it and then do the next meal because it's just gonna get way too messy here. But I wanna start off with the breakfast that I've been eating. One thing that's consistent always is I always have a little bit of fruit or green juice. I do alternate on the days, but this is about the size of a bowl that I'll have of berries. I think it's just the best thing to eat first thing in the morning. It's really cleansing. Remember the first thing you eat when you wake up really is the thing you absorb the most. So make sure it's healthier. Even if you want to have something a little unhealthier, try to start with something else good. Um, of course, I'll have a little bit of water when I wake up, sometimes warm water with lemon. To be honest, it alternates. I'm not one of those people that's like, every day it has to be with the apple cider vinegar or, or certain days it has to be with lemon. I kind of go based on my mood, but definitely I hydrate first. Then I'll have some berries and then I wanted to share the recipe that I've been talking about a lot in my other videos, but I haven't actually shown you guys how to make. And that is the kabucha squash, which I make kind of like an oatmeal, but I use it with squash. So what turned me on to this a little bit was when I think, or I thought I have SIBO, I'm not really sure. And we've been doing the low FODMAP diet. And this is one of the things I could have because you're not allowed to have grains in the diet. And I was didn't wanna just have like cold food every day. So I tried it out became completely obsessed. And I'm not even really into butternut squash or different like sweet things, but this I found an amazing recipe for. So I'm excited to share it with you guys. I wanted to keep this video not like an hour long. So some things I'm not gonna show you what to do if it's pretty basic. Literally all you do, is take a little bit of the squash and some frozen banana or fresh banana, both works, but frozen at least you can always have some in stock. Put it into a pot, add a little bit of like plant milk, whatever kind you want, whether it's like almond milk, coconut milk, hemp milk, heat it up until it gets warm. Pretty much heat it until you cook it, but because this is already cooked, it's just frozen, you don't have to take that long to do it. Now, if you wanna do that and just have that be your meal, that's great. I definitely, definitely recommend adding the frozen banana because this is gonna give it a sweetness. One day I just like forgot and I was eating it, like it definitely does not taste as good. And banana literally acts as like a sugar, a sweetener. So you're gonna mix it up. I like to really get it hot and mix it up so it kind of mixes together well. And then my favorite thing to do is add it into a blender. So I've got it here. This is kind of what it looks like once you cook it on the stove. This will end up pureeing it. If you like it chunkier, like if you like biting into the squash, you don't have to do this. But I also like adding it in here because I've been adding different things to make it more filling. Surprisingly, kabocha squash is like very, very light. Um, one serving is like 30 calories for two thirds a cup. There's five servings in here. So let's say you had a third of the bag or something, you'd be anywhere from like 90 to calories, 90 calories maybe. So it's pretty light and I like a more filling breakfast. So I've been adding it in here and I've been adding a little bit of sunflower seed butter. This is a really good alternative for anyone who it has a nut allergy or like, you know, can't tolerate almonds or cashews. Cashews can be a little harder to digest, especially versus the other nuts. Now, if you taste this on its own, it's actually very bitter. It doesn't taste that sweet, but when you mix it in here and blend it, that's the key. You won't notice it in there. So I like that I'm getting like the healthy fats from it and the benefits, but it's easier on your stomach. You don't have to worry about a nut allergy and it just mixes it up. So just add a little bit in there. And really you can use this squash as kind of like when I talk about how when you're making oatmeal, it's like your vehicle to add in a bunch of other goodies. That's kind of your vehicle here. So you can add in, if you really wanted a little protein powder, I, I haven't tried that, so I don't know how that would blend well, but you could do a little bit of cacao. You could add, like I love to add cinnamon, of course, to everything. I've done pumpkin pie spice, the seeds. You could add a little coconut oil if you want some of that in there, some MCT oil. And then I blend it with a little bit of almond milk or whatever milk. Now I just do this. And I'm not gonna lie, most times I just eat it right out of this little blender. So good. I'll also take this with me to go. 
Like I was catching a flight one day and I love these on the blender because they have the top and everything to it. So I just take it as my breakfast to go. The other thing I wanted to show you guys is this latte that I've been making, which is the most amazing coffee alternative. I'm so glad I discovered this brand. It's called Dandy Blend. So basically this is a blend of like dandelion tea. It's got extracts of roasted barley, rye, chicory root, and dandelion root. So dandelion tea on its own is super healthy. Um, dandelion has been known to be really good for bloating and stomach issues, but dandelion tea tastes nothing like coffee. This blend really, really tastes like you are drinking a latte. And if you go by the directions on here, I believe it says to use one teaspoon, one teaspoon. I use a full heaping tablespoon. When I did it with one teaspoon, it didn't taste anything like coffee. So make sure to use like a really good amount. I've already got my hot water here. I'm going to, per usual, make a little bit of my almond milk froth. I like to do like half milk, half water. I'll let that froth. Same. So even if you try it and it doesn't taste as strong, maybe it tastes a little bit more watery, just add a little more. It's super easy to mix in. I think that adding the steamed milk really helps to make it more like a latte. And if you don't have this frother, I mean, I, I always recommend this one because I love it, but you could also just heat a little bit of milk on the stove. That's super easy. Add this in here. It smells like coffee. I love coffee. I'll drink it sometimes because, you know, I enjoy it. I love the aroma, but the caffeine in general, is I, I might as well try to cut when I can. Coffee is acidic. So if there's alternatives, I'm always down for it if I like it. This has no caffeine. It doesn't mess with your hormones. It's not going to raise your cortisol. And truly, it like tastes like coffee to me. So when I'm home, I drink this. If I'm out and I want a latte, I will live my life and get one. But why not when you can? So here's a little latte. So yum. Definitely try this one. I'm curious to see if you guys like it. Some people on Instagram have reached out and said that they've tried it and it doesn't taste like coffee, but I think it's because you're not using enough. So one whole tablespoon, and if it's still not good enough, keep adding a little more in. So this has literally been my breakfast like on repeat all winter. So if I wanted to share, it's really warming and grounding and it keeps you just like cozy in the winter, especially in the colder weather. Now let's move this aside and we'll get to lunch. I really want to share this salad that I've been obsessing over. I just like threw it together one night and it was so good that I've been sharing it a ton on social and other people have really been enjoying it as well. So I'm going to actually pair this with a baked sweet potato, but as sweet potato fries, even though it seems like it's like maybe a smaller portion, it's actually really um, nutrient dense and really healthy and filling. Got spring mix. This is pre-washed. I like spring mix because the darker leafy greens give you a lot more nutrients, antioxidants. Normally I don't like them, but the way this mix is like, I don't like them as much as a romaine. Like I like that crunch normally, but the way this salad comes together, I would take advantage of the greens. One of the secret ingredients that we add is fresh dill. Um, if you can find a mix that has dill in it, I would always recommend that because it adds so much flavor and honestly, we don't take advantage of herbs enough. They're so healthy. They give us so much benefit. I mean years and years ago they would use them as medicine and some people still do use them as medicine that's how potent they are and how amazing they are and they add flavor so it's really one of those like why aren't we doing this more no-brainers there's no negative to it so dill has a really i mean even the aroma right now just makes you feel healthy and fresh and actually i think that when i cook with more herbs like this and you have that like fresh smell it inspires you to eat healthier like you appreciate food more there's something that happens when you're like God, food is so like amazing on its own. We don't have to add so much stuff to it and process it. So that's my spiel on herbs. We've got our spring mix in there. I'm also gonna, I've got some Persian cucumbers that I have out here. So I'm gonna move these aside. I keep the peel on because it has, adds a lot of extra benefit and I like the peel. If you don't like it, what I'd recommend doing, if you think you could even just like kind of slice half of it off, but also makes it like a little decorative. So you could just do a little bit like that. The peel on like a baby Persian cucumber um, is much less like intense than the peel on like a bigger cucumber. So I literally just slice it in half and then slice it in half one more time. So it makes these little like half circles. I don't like them too small because then I feel like you lose like the crunch and like don't taste it. I always eat a little as I'm making it. 
Okay. Also, don't forget that you can just bite right into these cucumbers as a snack. Okay, so now we've got some cherry tomatoes. I pre-washed these. You could totally snack out of these right out of the container. I actually, there's been so many times when I would work at the pharmacy that I would run to Whole Foods and just buy a pack of these, rinse them with water and then eat them as a snack. But um, I like to cut them in half because they're a little bit big, so it's easier to eat this way. And it makes you feel like you have more. Now we're gonna add the fresh dill on top. I like a lot, but you know, do you here, whatever you think is best, but definitely you can be really generous with it. Adding like a little fresh dill automatically makes you seem like way fancier and like you're a way better chef. So it's a kind of a nice trick to do too. And now I'm gonna add some raw pumpkin seeds. So this is just a handful. I like to stick to raw, unsalted, unroasted. I always say this, um, you just get it in its purest form. You're getting the most benefit out of it. You're not getting the extra sodium. When, when you roast it, you kind of lose some of the nutrients. With most things that you heat, that happens. So it's good to just keep it raw and they taste fine. And the walnuts, I'll just kind of like break into little chunks. Of all the nuts too, walnuts are really the best when it comes to giving you the omega source and dose that you need. So this is great for like soft skin, for your hair. Oils are super important to get into your diet, especially if you have like dry, brittle hair, dry scalp, like really, really add. Your hairdresser will notice if you are low and then you add these. So with this one, literally just olive oil and vinegar does the trick. I don't really measure this to be honest. I just kind of drizzle some on. And I go pretty heavy on the apple cider vinegar, which again, I don't like this on its own. If I'm taking shots of apple cider vinegar is hard for me. I don't like the taste of it, but on a salad, it just has a different vibe. Let me grab a fork. I'm just gonna toss this a little bit and then just let it sit for a few minutes while I bake the sweet potato. I'm actually gonna add a little bit of pepper too. Black pepper in a salad actually adds a lot of flavor, so I would recommend that as well. If you like salt a lot and you're trying to cut back on salt, um, just so you guys know, salt can increase your blood pressure. So if you have like history in your family or if you have high blood pressure, it's good to try to avoid it. It can also tend to bloat you. Adding in other spices and really overdoing it on the other spices will kind of give you that satisfaction. It still has that salty like palate, so I would try that. When it comes to making sweet potato fries, this is one of the things I do all the time. And this is just, there's, there's something about it that after I eat this, I feel so good. Like I feel really satiated and full and like satisfied, but I don't ever feel heavy. And it gives me my French fry craving because I'm obsessed with French fries, my favorite food. I don't use any oil, I bake it, so it's super easy. The trick is if you slice them really, really thin, you can put zero oil and they just kind of crisp up in the oven on their own. So that's always been my trick. So I'm gonna like really slice them thin. You can also feel free to like season these with, any, with anything else you like. If you wanna add some nutritional yeast, you could even add some vinegar onto here. One more tip with vinegar too. It, actually helps you digest. So oftentimes people will use digestive enzymes or take pills even to help them digest their food. And it's the acid that you're missing. So if you do have trouble with digestion, I would recommend just like a little like spoonful of any kind of vinegar. I would recommend apple cider or like red wine vinegar just onto your food and it will help you. I literally just like kind of space them out on here. This is how I would encourage everyone to try to eat is like enjoy the actual food in its pure form and you don't need to do so much manipulation to it. You can just kind of learn to enjoy the flavors. I'll usually do anywhere from 375 to 425. I just kind of watch it. Usually like 15 minutes, 20 minutes. I just try one and if they're ready, then they're ready. That is it. I'm just gonna put these into the oven and bake them and then they come out pretty crispy. 
Okay, so here's this cute little lunch. Now, by the way, when you cook the sweet potatoes and you slice them really thin, they tend to shrink a little bit. Well, it looks smaller than it is, but it is a whole potato. Don't be fooled. And you've got your salad. I personally love French fries and salad. It's like my favorite combo. So sometimes I will just take these, put them right in there, or I'll get a little bit of ketchup and mustard and eat it. But the salad is so yummy and it looks like kind of a smaller, like maybe not so filling meal, but you've got walnuts, you've got pumpkin seeds, it's protein and healthy fats, you've got olive oil, you've got a whole sweet potato. So you're really getting an amazing meal here, but it's just clean food. So good. I like to have nothing between breakfast and lunch, at least give myself that, and then my snack between lunch and dinner. So one thing I've been loving is peppers. I mean, this is not really anything new. I've shared this a lot. It's one of my favorite snacks. These are baby bell peppers. They are super sweet, not spicy at all. You can literally just bite into them. I like these more than a regular, like actual sweet pepper. There's just something about the shape of it that makes it taste better, like it's crunchier. So if you don't like peppers, I would still recommend giving these a try. And just again, want to reiterate, these are not spicy. Everyone thinks I'm biting into like a spicy pepper. Packed with vitamin C, more than an orange. They just don't get enough credit. So definitely try these. I just really like snacks that you can easily bite into and crunch. Like even this is one of the cucumbers I had left over from the lunch. You can just bite into it. I also wanted to share another snack option. You can just take a rice cake. You can do this with a cracker too, but I like the size of a rice cake. It's just a little more filling, a little bit of nut butter. This one is called Fat Bomb. I like that they come in these little packs. It's dry roasted macadamia nuts and sea salt. So this is especially for people who like a higher fat diet. This is a great energy boost on its own. I don't personally like nut butters on their own. I think I don't like the texture as much, but I love them like spread onto things. I've definitely packed these on flights before too. If you keep them like a little bit colder so they're not like in the sun, they won't be like as soupy. You can just spread it on here. Okay. It's really good. Easy, simple, just on the go. Okay, so that covers lunch, covers snack. Now I'm gonna clear this up and we'll talk about dinner. I do also wanna say I am constantly drinking water throughout the day. I haven't really shared that, but hydration is huge. It's so important. So that's especially on the East Coast and in the winter, it's really dry here with the winter and the cold. So definitely drink a lot of water and now we'll get to dinner. Okay, so lastly for dinner, this is kind of just a quick dinner I've been throwing together and I wanted to share. Um, I already have this chickpea pasta on the stove. It's already boiled. So I just wanted to get that done because we all know how to boil pasta. Um, it's literally just made from chickpeas. And this one's kind of cool because they also add pea protein. So if you're looking for a higher source of protein, this could be an interesting one. Like one serving is 14 grams of protein. I usually do more than one serving because it's really small. What they say is one. So you might end up getting anywhere from like, you know, 15 to 25 grams of protein if you have more servings. So when it comes to veggies, whenever I eat pasta, it's a no brainer. I always add veggies because it makes the bowl feel more filling. So you have a big bowl of pasta, but you know, there's veggies mixed in there. So it just kind of gives the illusion that you're eating a huge bowl of pasta, but these are specific for really quick meals. So, you know, if you want a faster meal for dinner and you don't want to like chop up and saute veggies, I like broccoli a lot. It's just, even as a vegetable, it's one of the higher protein vegetables and it's just so good for you. And then baby spinach is something I like to always keep fresh because you can eat it in a salad, you can put it in a smoothie, and when you put it onto like a bowl of pasta, let's say, it wilts in like five minutes, so it's, you don't really have to do much. I like wilting it just enough where it still kind of has that freshness to it, not where it's like shrunk away to nothing, but still so that it's cooked. Um, I've been using Rao's sensitive marinara sauce. This one has no onions and garlic, so if you do have any gut issues, if you have bloating, indigestion, whatever. Onions and garlic, as much as I love them and they have so many health benefits, they can be irritating on the stomach. So I'd recommend trying this. This one also tastes really, really good. Actually, uh, my friend came over and we were like making dinner and she was obsessed with this taste. And she has no bloating issues, but she just liked it. And then this nutritional yeast I've really been liking. This is like a Bragg's nutritional yeast blend. And they add like rosemary, onion. I mean, I guess there's a little onion and garlic in this, it's different red bell pepper, carrot, tomato, black pepper, um, apple cider vinegar, celery seed, tons of spices, no salt, so you don't have to worry about sodium. Adds a lot of flavor. It weirdly reminds me of when I used to get um, a cup of noodles chicken flavor, which 
I mean, I don't eat anymore, but in college I ate that a lot and it kind of has that seasoning taste of that, but it's organic and really good. So I add a ton of this onto there. So I have my pot of pasta right now. I'm just gonna literally add in the broccoli frozen, a little bit of fresh spinach, some tomato in this and mix it up and then I'll show you the finished products. Okay, so this is dinner. It was really super basic. You just boil pasta, strain the pasta, add in frozen broccoli and spinach and your tomato sauce and you are done. I already cooked a little bit of nutritional yeast with it, this seasoning, but I'm gonna top it with a little bit more because it's really good. And like I said, the more seasoning and spices when there's no sodium, the better. It's just adding flavor and nutrition. So I'm gonna have a little bite. Really good. Also, the pasta is gluten-free, high in protein. This is all around just a really nice meal to have for dinner. And you don't really notice that it's not traditional pasta, in my opinion. I wouldn't know, especially with everything else mixed in. So that's it. That's my what I eat in a day winter. These are things that I've pretty much been doing on rotation um, this winter in New York. I hope you guys enjoyed all these recipes. If you want more of these, we can kind of do these every month. Maybe as the seasons change, that could be really fun. Please let me know any questions you have in the comments. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.